Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dropping the Gloves on a Monday here. We're rapidly getting to February, almost it's January 29th. Thank you for joining us here. Episode, who knows? Episode a lot. We've been around a long time. We appreciate all the support, everybody. And we appreciate our friends over at Give Better because they're the best responsible sports gambling company in the biz. And guess what? We just gave away another $100 to a listener, Tim. Dana picked up $100 over the weekend from the Leafs-Jets game. She nailed the five picks. I did not. Connor Hellebuck did not come through for me, unfortunately. But good for her. She gets $100. And you can do that, too. It's super easy. Go to givebetter.app slash DTG. Sign up. You download the app. All you do, you got to get five picks right. And you win $100 from now until their Super Bowl. There's still two weeks left. They're doing games every single day. It's a lot of fun. They're going hockey crazy now, finally. It's a good thing. Check it out. It's Give Better, Responsible Gambling. It's it's a no-brainer, and it's super fun. So check it out, givebetter.app slash DTG. Tim and I are going to do some picks later this week, just like we did on Friday. It's a lot of it's – good, it's a good time. How did your picks do, Tim? Did you manage to uh, win 100 bucks? I didn't. I think I got three out of the five. Matthew's got his points, obviously, but yeah, the rest of them didn't hit, I don't think. So I forget exactly what my picks were, but this is this is the beauty of it, though. You just get to keep trying. You don't hit, just try again the next day. It, it costs absolutely nothing right now to play. It's free, free, free as a jaybird. So check it out, givebetter.app slash DTG, and be like Dana, win $100, scot-free. There's a lot of articles when I was a kid growing up. Title, great Scott. Scott Free, stuff like that. Very clever writers. Articles about you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Lots of articles about me. My mom used to cut them out. Did your mom used to do that? Even for like the just the novice, the house league baseball games or hockey games, or John got a single and a double and she'd cut it out. I uh, there was one time when Manny Ramirez got he was rehabbing an injury and he played for the Pawtucket Red Sox for like a, a weekend. And uh, there was a picture of him and my buddies and I were at the game all in the back. So it wasn't even an article about me. It's just Manny and like way in the background, old black and white photo. You can kind of see us. And that was on our fridge for like 10 years. So to answer your question, yeah, my mom would do that I'm stuff I'm surprised too. that you haven't brought that up on the show that you're like best friends with Manny <laughs> Ramirez. Well, I, I try not to brag about it. You do with Gronk. Could you see you walked by Gronk at a club one time and you like never shut up about it. You tell every guest we have, like this is Tim. Uh, he's our co-host. He's my producer and he's good friends with Gronk. Tim, tell him. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I don't bring it up. I don't know. Why. I know you think it's funny, but whatever. This is before we go on the air, everybody. Yeah. I, I yeah, do yeah. it. And, and it's a lot of it fun for Gar me. Garland the other day. We've done it many times. Yeah. Always before we go on the air. I was playing cards last night, Sunday night, and one of my friends does a card night. We watch football. We play cards just in the playoffs. And there was a big Lions fan there. And I'll tell you what, he was very happy in the first half. And I just kept saying, it's a long game. There's four quarters in this game. And he was like, oh, Lions are doing great. As soon as the third quarter hit, I don't know if many people know me or how I am. If you have a scab or any kind of weakness, I'll pick at it. And I'll just, I just won't stop. And I, I find it very fun until it gets to that point where you're like, you're getting very annoyed or you might hit me. Then I, then I ease up. I read the room. I was all over this guy. It was Ryan. And it was so funny to watch him just get angrier and angrier. And I would throw out little comments like, well, Matt Stafford probably would have made that play. Stuff like that. <laughs> you know, when Jared Goff would miss a pass, oh, that's not good. You know, maybe they regret that. No, oh, maybe should have. Kick that field. Little, little needlers lost his marbles. He had to leave and go outside and cool off a couple times. It was so great. <laughs> and then the cherry on top, the Lions lose. So it was just, it was a great night for me. And I won cards. It was, it was, it was a, it was a win win for me. And it was lose lose for Lions. Is that two weeks in a row for you? Cause I feel like every Monday you tell us that you won cards last night. I lost last weekend because my aces got cracked. Um, and then I won yesterday. And it's not big money. Everybody buys in for six dollars. So I'm going home with thirty dollars. You know what I mean? Spending money for the week. There's and lunch, yeah. There is lunch. Um, no, not me. My lunch is I get the two for one sub deal at Subway, and it ends up co costing me eight dollars out the door with two foot longs. Not bad. Pretty good. Very economical. All right. You know who's not feeling economical right now? David Yurichek. 
the Columbus Blue Jackets first round draft pick in 2022 is a little upset, Tim. And it seems it's the growing trend these days for players, if they're upset, rather to internalize it or to keep it in-house or to just deal with it and move on and kind of work through your problems. We're airing all our dirty laundry. Everything has to be said. All, all facets, the media, we're doing podcasts, we're doing news, we're doing TV. Anybody who can listen to us, we're telling everybody. I love it because this is the world I live in now. But if I was a player, I would be mortified by what's happening in the league right now. It seems like every week there's new drama being sprouted up because a player said something. I want to be traded. I want. Speaking of that, see Ryan Reeves scored the goal the other day. Calls out the GM, says, I'm healthy, back in the lineup, gets a goal. Leafs got back on track because Ryan Reeves is back in the lineup. They beat the Winnipeg Jets. So good for Revo, friend of the show. Always always knew he could do it. I had his back 100%. What is David Yerachek saying, Tim, to the Columbus Blue Jackets? What's this drama with the Blue Jackets? Yeah, so I'll just set the scene a little bit. You already mentioned he's a, a sixth overall pick in 2022. He's a six foot three defenseman. He's tall. He's still, he's still slender. He's, he's still very young. So he's under 200 pounds. He has nine points, one goal, eight assists in 36 NHL games this season. He's playing just under five or 15 minutes average time on ice. So the Blue Jackets lost as they, as they do. They're a pretty bad team and they had a pretty bad loss, five nothing against the, the Winnipeg Jets back in January 9th. And he was in that game, and he did not kind of play the end of the game. He was he was benched, and then he was scratched for three straight games. And then at the end of that week, the following week, January 18th, he was sent down to the AHL team, the Cleveland the Monsters, and um, he sent down to, to go work on his game. You're not good enough to be here, basically. And that was kind of it. Like, you know, no one really picked up on that at the time. It's things for the player, but whatever. This weekend, he finally got a chance to air his grievances about his frustrations, about being sent down, and he did not hold back. So this is what he said. It's a little bit of a long quote here. Quote, I played good hockey in the NHL. I'm an NHL player right now. That's my opinion that I should be in the NHL right now. I see guys from the same draft, like Simon Nemich and Korchinski. They get a player, on, they get a chance on the power play. They play a ton of minutes in the NHL. Those are different teams or different situations, but I can compare with them. I just want a chance to play like that. They told me my last game was not good enough for me. I told them, I don't think so, but that's your opinion. I was out of the lineup after that. A whole month now, it feels like I haven't played. So this has come up a lot. You know, the guys airing their grievances. And part of me, before I get into like whether he's right or not, I like I like the pushback against it. You want a guy who's doesn't like being scratched, doesn't like being bent, doesn't want to be sent down, wants to be in the lineup, doesn't say, okay, if you think so, I'll go work on that stuff. He's, you want the guy that pushes back against it because you need to have that attitude for to be an NHL player. you got to have thick skin. You have to be able to say, no, F you, I need to play. And I, I like that, but you're already scratching your head. Why do you, do you like that? Point? Would you rather have like a guy pushing back against being benched and scratched and sent down or a guy who says – if you think so, coach, whatever you say, I'll go work on X, Y, Z. Yeah, I like that. Here I go. Yeah, really? I, I would say, oh, yeah, you're the coach. This is your job. I'm going to go work on my game and try to get better so I can play. I don't want someone, if I'm a coach, I don't want someone saying to me, oh, I'm. you know what, I need you to sit down. F you, coach, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm the man. Put me in. I'm like, e no, you're not. I'm the coach. I make the decisions around here. Okay, there has to be some kind of hierarchy here, right? And some respect and authority. Okay, but haven't you done it as a player? I've never cussed out a coach for not playing me. What no. was a torch story when you screamed at him? Oh, he was sending me down to the Black Aces. I'm like, that's the same that's thing. A, it's a whole. I wasn't even in the lineup. I wasn't in the lineup. He Neither he is did he. it in front of the team. He disrespected me. There's a difference there. <laughs> sure there is. Okay. I've never once okay. said to a coach to his face after he says you're a healthy scratch, like this is not okay, and then gone to the media. I think this is a step further, especially a 20-year-old kid who has earned absolutely nothing. Nothing in the NHL. He's played a total of, what, 40 games in the show right now? Yep. This is a little bit much for me. Here's my take on it. I agree with you. I like that he's upset. He has a right to be upset. He feels like he should be playing. That's as far as it should go. I don't know who's steering him in these decisions because this is a big deal here. This kid could 
completely be sidetracking his career. You're burning bridges right now with the organization that drafted you. And they control your rights for the next seven years. You're 20 years old. They have your rights for a long time, kid. So you better be careful what you say and watch your P's and Q's because they'll bury your ass in the minors. That's it. Like they, they, there's, they have no problem doing this. And you're not that highly coveted of a draft pick where people are just going to be clamoring to pick you up and, you know, shell out a first rounder for you. That's my, that's my issue there because you're, you're in this situation in this point in your career where you, you have no room for error. You need to just keep your mouth shut and play the game and then get called up. And I kind of get where Columbus is coming from. It, they're they're almost protecting this kid because Cleveland's a good AHL team. They're successful, and Columbus is a train wreck of a franchise. We'll get to Patrick Line in a second. Everything else is going wrong in Columbus. Do you want to have this kid in that kind of environment and push him and give him minutes and then stunt his growth? Or do you want to put him in a situation where he's successful? He can be a leader on that team potentially. He can be the guy and then bring him up. He's already got his year of eligibility. He's played 36 games. Cha-ching. He's going to be in his second year of his contract next year, so he doesn't have to worry about that. But I just I just think Columbus could potentially be doing the smartest thing right now. They, they've rushed along young defensemen before, and they maybe they want to save him for next year. I don't know what the reasoning is here, because it is strange for me, too, when you're putting this kid down. I don't understand it, but maybe that's why. Maybe they just want to let him be the one power play guy. In Cleveland, and let him just get 25 minutes in Cleveland. Because they just still do have good defensemen in Columbus, and he's playing behind a lot of guys in the depth chart. So I think like you feel for the kid, but you can't be saying that. You're 20 years old, Tim. You've played 40 games in the show. Like, I don't care if you're the sixth overall pick. Like, it's just, it's, and you can't compare yourself to other players. That's, that's a recipe for disaster when you start comparing yourself to other people. You, you can't do that. Yeah, but. I, there's there's part of me that thinks he has a point, you know, because he he put up really good points last year in the AHL. As a 19 yeah. year old, six foot three defenseman, he had 38 points in 55 games. Like that's pretty darn good. And I understand that he's not playing a lot. Uh, he's not playing that well, nine points in 36 games, like you said. But he's doing that while he's averaging less than 15 minutes a night. If you have a bad team, as Columbus does, wouldn't you want to give this kid top four minutes and just give him? The, ex- the experience, let him get his miles under him a little bit, let him learn the NHL game and develop and grow and be part of the core that's building the NHL experience rather than burying him down. Like, is, is Jake Bean and uh, and Andrew Peake playing that important to you, that they need to get more minutes than, than Jerichek? It just I feel like I'd rather just see this kid get some seasoning and build his game a little bit and become a man in the NHL rather than be buried down when he doesn't want to be. Um, to answer the first question, no, I don't think it's a good thing for him to just play in Cleveland or excuse me, not Cleveland, play in Columbus and just be in his D zone all the time. You really think Columbus is is going to be that successful? Cleveland's first place in the North Division right now. I just looked it up. They're 12, 25, 13, and one. They're playing great. They score a ton of goals. They're probably really great on the power play. He can go up there, play 22, 23 minutes, have a long playoff run and then have a successful season. And then parlay that into a good season next year with Columbus. Or you can go to Columbus, be dash 35, build a ton of bad tendencies, get just shellacked every single night. Your D zone gets sloppy because you're always chasing the game. And they just get frustrated and everybody's mean and everybody's in a bad mood. And you just end up hating hockey. There's a case to be said for both ways. You go, you stay in the show and you get some experience. Or you go to Cleveland and you have a really great year and you learn how to win, and you grow with these group of kids, and then you come up together. I, I don't know. I'm siding with Yarmo, and we were critical of him last week, but I, I kind of like this move. I don't know. So Adam Portsline, who's like the guy in Columbus, said there was, quote-unquote, there was concern that Jerichek would decline to report to the AHL, meaning like demand a trade or just not, not play. To his credit, he did, and he had great things to say about it. He said, quote, the guys here in Cleveland are awesome. The coaches are awesome. It's fun to be here now because there's a lot of winning. There's a good energy, but this is not what I want, right? Now, in fairness, I feel like we need to remind ourselves that he's 20 years old. This is not the 25-year-old defenseman who's like who's, whose chances are slipping away, and you can feel like he's become a, a journeyman, an AHLer, and he doesn't deserve that. He is still a kid. 
he just turned 20. Like he's still got a lot of time and, and uh, a lot to prove. So I guess it makes sense into that sense, but I still understand the frustration if I'm him and I look around the other guys who I feel like I'm as good at, if not better than, which is what he's saying when he mentions Nemec and Kevin Korczynski who are playing top power play minutes. They're playing 20 plus minutes a game. They're, they're getting all these opportunities and you feel like he's not, even though he's on a bad team. And usually you see those situations the other way around. Yeah. What are you going to do? It's not his decision. This is how hockey works. You get told what to do and you do it. And it's unfortunate. But this is what you do when you sign up to play in the NHL. Your coach or GM or president can say, you're not going to play here right now. Go down to Cleveland. Now, before we move on to the next thing on Columbus's uh, list of woes, I just want to point out, this is the second time in two weeks, two and a half, that we've had a Columbus player speak out against the media. So this is becoming a growing trend because obviously Merz Lickens had stuff to say. And then the next thing that kind of just pours a little bit of salt in the wound, Patrick Laine over the weekend entered the NHLPA player assistance program. He's going to be away from the team for an indefinite amount of time. The team said, you know, we support him 100%. We'll give him what he needs. Laine put out a statement on Instagram that said it was for his mental health. He's going to step away and deal with that and come back better than ever, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what, I don't know, what are your thoughts on this? How, were you surprised? Well, yeah, it's a huge surprise. And Tim and I were talking about this before we came on the show. It's like, how do you, how do we approach this? Because I think everybody knows how I feel about the situation. And I'm sensitive to the fact that it's a new league and there's the players are different from when I played. Even, you know, I, I retired seven years ago. Things have changed. You know, it, it's, it's a different environment. And so I, I'm not going to sit here and go back in my day. We would never, we would never. If he needs to go and get his mind right and that's affecting his play, then I think he should be able to go. That's all. I don't know, Tim. I, it, it's something I've never had to deal with. And I was put in some tough situations where on the opposite end of the spectrum, where Line is expected to perform. He's expected to score every single night. He is the high powered guy. 180 from that. I was on the bottom end of the total pole where I was always on the cutting chopping block. I could be cut. I could be this. I could be that. I can't, I could not make one mistake on the ice or I was, I was going to be benched for 10 games. Every single thing I did was crucial for me to stay in the lineup. So it, it, every, every spot has his, it's stress. You know, I think that's what it shows. Even these top guys feel a lot of pressure. And I think what it is now is a lot of these young kids don't have an outlet for any of these issues. And the internet and all of the stuff that's always in your face, the 24 hour news feed, everybody is accessible via DMs or this and that. There, there's no escaping it. And so when it's always in your face and you have this high salary and you're being reminded of it constantly, it, it can wear on you pretty heavily. And you can tell he wants to do it. Like he wants to succeed. He's had injuries problems. He's always been on the trading block. He's been feuding with coaches throughout his career. And he finally just broke. And good for him to step up and say, I need to step away rather than just let it internalize and then just develop some kind of drug or alcohol problem or just do something else, you know? So I applaud him. It takes, that's a gutsy thing to say, you know, I need to, I need to step away from my mental health. Like, because you're being super vulnerable to people like me. Who be like, ah, you chicken, you like, you're, you're woman, you know, you got to man up and suck it up. So I'm not going to do that. I think it's good for him. He should take his time. And figure out what's going on and then come back and hopefully people will support him. And it looks like they are, but uh, I don't know. like I say with players, the league is better with Patrick line in it when he's ripping, you know, one timers bar down and doing his crazy celebration. I want to see that. I like that. So it's, it's unfortunate for him. It's unfortunate for Columbus. They just can't catch a break lately, but uh, hopefully he comes back soon. I don't know. I mean, what do you have to say about it, Tim? No, I think you nailed it. The only thing I would add is that, you know, it's hard enough for someone to admit to themselves that they need help and that they can't handle whatever they're dealing with right now. But it's that much harder when you're a public figure like that and people think you're supposed to be a certain way and, and to admit it publicly and have that platform and to be able to make a statement, I think, takes some courage. So, uh, like yeah, you said, there'll be, clowns who will, there'll be some clowns who come after and be like, oh, you, got you know, what? we pay you eight million dollars. We don't care how you feel. Just go out there and perform. It's It's a little more you know, trickier than that. It it's, starts up top. It's a mental game. Saw it last night with the Lions. Dominated the first half. Then they just completely fell apart. Completely different team. And they just stunk the rest of the game. Same players. Same night. Same talent level. 
mental. If you're watching on YouTube, you could have seen me do this, this reference. You got to watch it on YouTube. If you don't, you're missing out. It was incredible. All right, moving on, Tim. What are we talking about next here? Well, we're still in Columbus. There's one more hit they took over the one weekend. More? Adam, Adam Fantilli oh. left Sunday's game with a lower body injury. Did not return. He was spotted later in the night on crutches. So you've got all these, you've got a bad team to begin with. You have all these injuries. You have a player being sent down who's reporting to the media. You have a goalie who wants to be traded. You have your star player, star goal scorer is uh, taking a leave of absence. And now your best prospect is hurt. It's just, it, it's hurting down there in Columbus. What do you, let me, let me ask you something. What do you think Johnny Gaudreau thinks every night? Getting ready to go to bed. Been here for two years now. Ain't looking good. You think he, like, how much regret does he have for picking Columbus over everybody else? I don't think any. I mean. Stop. It, no, well, he has John, to. If, if he cared about winning, he wouldn't have gone to Columbus. So, like, maybe he didn't think it would be this bad, but it's not like he, like, it's a totally different from what he thought he was signing on to. He was taking the money. He was taking the small market, didn't want the media attention, and he's not getting it. So I think he's not that regretful. Maybe he'd be like, I, I didn't think we'd be this bad. I thought we'd be competitive. I thought I'd get to play with line A, et cetera. But it's not like he like, thought he was going to be with a really good team and then they're not doing that because he, he knew what he was signing on to. Do you disagree? He's got five more, five more years left. Oh, I think he regrets it wholeheartedly. He could have gotten $10 million from a lot of other teams. I, yeah. thought, I think he thought Columbus was going to compete. Bounce back here. He wanted out of Calgary. Woof. Regrets. 100% he regrets his decision. But yeah, poor Adam Fantilli. All the, the top draft picks are out the window. Is this open up the gate here, the doors for Calder? For who? Luke Hughes is going to jump into that breach. Cooley, it's, Logan uh, Cooley from Arizona. Brock Faber is might be my pick right now. Brock Faber, out. Minnesota Wild. He's Why? so good. It, it's kind of tightening up the race right now because of these injuries. Connor was head and shoulders above everybody else. Now he's been out six to eight weeks, broken jaw. And you win the rookie of the year missing two months of the season. Stay tuned. All right, Tim, do the Wendy's ad because I always butcher it. S-O-G, G-A-A, P-P-G. All these acronyms can make or break your week, but don't overlook B-P-M-M, Wendy's Bacon Portobello Mushroom Melt. Sure, it might not help you win weekly prizes with Wendy's and Daily Faceoff Fantasy, but unlike your predictions, it never disappoints. So try your luck, but don't push it because the bacon portobello mushroom melt is only back for a limited time. And if you miss it, you won't get a second chance. Sign up for Daily Faceoff today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Perfect. Let's talk about it. the Rangers. They yeah, did not have a good January. 5-7-2, and two, not good enough for this team. Really five and nine if you take away the, you know the over, overtime losses. They started away. January with a seven point lead in the Metro over Carolina. Ended the month still in first, only a two point lead, and Carolina has a game in hand. So it's a lot tighter race than it was four weeks ago. There's a lot of things that are going wrong with this team, but the one everyone's talking about right now is between the pipes. Igor Shosturkin. He does not look like himself this year, and I feel like this has been covered up a little bit just because of how well Jonathan Quick has played. And he, Jonathan Quick's starting every third game right now. It's like almost exactly it's if you look at the math. So he's taking a lot of pressure off Quick, and he's playing really uh, off Shosturkin, and he's playing really well. But Shosturkin is a below 900 goals against right now. He was the worst goalie in the month among all eligible goalies, like all 40 of them who have played over X amount of starts. And his save percentage every year has dropped for three straight years, from uh, 935 in 2022 916 in 2023 and 899 this Oof. season below 900 so that's a major concern and people are kind of worried like how much of this is because you can look at Sorokin the same thing those guys seem to have you know mirrored uh careers so far that's one of them the next is on the defense too do you want to stop talking about Shesterkin at all do you want me to keep going I knew something was up when I got offered a trait in my fantasy Ooh. league I'm very involved Ooh. in fantasy I've been on a heck of a winning streak. Um, I just won again this week. I'm slowly creeping up the standings. I've been paying a little more attention. Um, I beat the guy in first place, Effin and Jeffin. Beat him five to four, which is a big deal. So I got ticked a little bit of Igor Shosturkin and his, his struggles this year when I got offered a trade. 
Igor Shosturkin for Stuart Skinner straight up. Everybody's laughing at me for Stuart Skinner. Oh, he stinks. You got to drop him. Tim said I should drop him. Oh, pump the brakes. Stuart Skinner's on a good team. 17 wins in a row. Stuart Skinner. Potentially, potential Vesna winner. He's been playing lights out. If somebody wants to trade me Shosturkin for me, crazy. Stuart Skinner. You guys a stud. I got Stuart Skinner, Aiden Hill, and Vitek Vanacek. I got the best goaltending trio in the league. Hands down. Hands down. Unbelievable. But yeah, that's all I want to say on Shesterkin. He's having a he's having a rough year. Not good. <laughs> that's some great analysis. The next is thing that- is just a crazy, crazy stat that I came across in Twitter. The Rangers have given up 140 goals this season. Gondre Miller has been on the ice for 113 of them. 81% of the is goals again for the entire team is 140. This was as of Friday, I think. So it might be, you know, add one more game to that. But that's crazy stat. That can't that's be true. Good. That's a, isn't, I mean, obviously this is not all minuses and probably some penalty kill there and everything, but still, like, that's a crazy, crazy number. Um, so let's talk about one, the next kind of thing with the Rangers is that right now, Philip Heedle. Hold on. Let's stay on that thought for a second. He's okay. only, I don't know if that's true because he's plus four. Well, they've scored a lot of goals too. He must be on for all of them. Yeah, but also don't forget if he's if he's getting, allowing a lot of power play goals or penalty kill goals, they wouldn't count against it. We're gonna have to do a little more due diligence here because that seems a who tweeted that out? Did I tweet it out? That's a lie. If I did, <laughs> I tweet out a lot of false stuff. That's yeah, interesting. I'll go see if I can find it, yeah, because he's plus he's plus four on the year, and if he's been on for 80 percent of the goals that means he's been on for 80 percent both ways which is an incredible stat if, if that's the case and i don't like he's he's okay offensively but he's not known for his offensive talent he's not on you know adam fox's shotgun side that's lindgren so good wow good gracious that that's an ag- aggressive stat from miller he's a good defensive i like him but yeah he too. is he is prone to kind of I guess giving up goals, whatever that means. Let's see. They got power play goals. They've scored 28, 9, 18, 27. I, we should do this later. This is bad, bad TV. Yeah. But he, he hasn't scored any power play goals, so he's not even on the power play. I don't know, Tim. Something smells fishy. I'll look into With- that more, but I saw it on the internet, so I believed it. Okay. Um, but let's talk about the Rangers. The depth is the problem now. Because obviously Panarin's got like 60-something points already, and you're getting goals from Kreider. You're getting some solid production from Zibanejad, even though he had a really slow January. But the depth is going to be an issue. They had the fourth line kind of figured out, and they had the third line figured out, except Hedl, um went down over the weekend. So he missed some time earlier in the season because of the concussion. And then at a practice, he coll- I don't know if he collided with someone or, or if he hit something, the boards or whatever, but he went down hard for a while. It was announced yesterday that he's out for the season. He's he's done. Um, and so a, sub, a setback with his concussion injuries, he also put out a statement and just said, you know, I'm going to take care of this. I'll be back next year. Love the fans, et cetera, et cetera. Now the Rangers are a very top-heavy team. According to Hockey News, in an article I was reading earlier, quote, outside of structure, the biggest issue the Rangers have is a lack of identity on the third line. When the kid line was both a checking line and a trio of young talent, they had specific roles. That's Kako, Hedl, and Lafreniere. Kako is still on the third line. Hedl's injured. Lafreniere got moved up. The third line doesn't have that identity anymore. They have a first line responsible for all three zones. They have a second line that's pretty good. The fourth line is a relentless four-checking line. That's Barkley, Gajero's line. No clear third line right now. They got uh, Brodzinski, and they have um, Kako, Kako, and, and they've got Kali. Yeah, and so they just don't have that identity right now. And that's a big problem because you're getting a lot of mismatch. And as we know in the playoffs, a lot of times the, fr- the top two lines more or less cancel each other out. It's the depth scoring that you've got to have. They had a depth center. They waived him last week, Nick Bonino, who could have played that role. Didn't fit in the cap situation. They, they um, waived him. So the Rangers finally find themselves losing five out of – what was the number? Five out of 14, 13 in uh, – in, in January, and now Shesterk is not playing well. They have this big hole in their lineup. They're looking at trade partners. The one that everyone's talking about right now is Sean Monaghan. He's that center in Montreal who all of a sudden is playing really good. I think he's got something like 11 points in his last eight games. 
three million dollars. Everyone wants him. Everyone wants him as a depth center. The Rangers are near the top of that list. This is really interesting. That was a report from Friedman on uh, Thirty Two Thoughts podcast. He said, "Quote: The whole Jeff Gordon and Rangers dynamic." Remember, R- Gordon was the GM before Drury, and he was sent out of town when the team wasn't winning. Let's just say they are not on each other's Christmas card list. Let's just go with it. So that complicates the deal there, but that's the kind of player they're going to be looking for. So would would you really see players and GMs not working out deals because of personal grievances? Did that really happen, do you think? Well, there was more to the Jeff Gordon thing other than them not winning because they were in a rebuild that the, the franchise stated, said, hey, we're going to you know rebuild this team bear with us a little bit. And they were having a successful rebuild. They brought in a lot of good players. They brought in Panarin. They traded for Adam Fox, one of the lopsided trades of our era, a beautiful trade for the New York Rangers, just fleecing the Carolina Hurricanes. And the reason Gordon got fired was after the Tom Wilson incident, the New York Rangers released a statement criticizing Department of Player Safety, calling for the head of George Peros, And Jeff Gordon and um, John Davidson said, that has nothing to do with us. We did not okay the statement, and they distanced themselves from it right away. And it came from James Dolan, the owner, who's just a weird bird, like a weird cat. Nobody knows what he's thinking. He's just a weird dude. So the, the, the word on the street was they got fired because of that, that they did not. And this is widely known. It's not just me speculating. This is widely known and thrown about the hockey world. That's why they were fired. They didn't back up the team when they released that statement. Dolan got pissed, gassed them both, gave Drury the GM and the president job, and it just happened like that because Gordon and Davidson were doing fantastic. They were were starting this rebuild. They brought in, like I mentioned, those players. They traded for Fox. They brought in Panarin. They drafted all these young kids who were going to help build the team. And it was a process, and they were slowly building up this team, and then they didn't back them up with the Wilson thing, and then they gassed them. So fast forward to now, Gordon's now the GM of the Canadians, and he doesn't want to deal with them. And he's like, you guys did me dirty, and you just released a statement without my knowledge. I'm the GM of the team. The president had no idea about it, John Davidson, and now you want to make a trade with me? So if I'm Jeff Gordon... And I have five teams that are vying for Sean Monahan, and they're all offering me the same thing. You think he's going to pick the Rangers? Not a chance. Not a chance. Hockey's a small world, Tim. And if you burn bridges, it's going to come back to bite you. And Jeff Gord's a smart cat. I remember when I was there, Sather was the GM, but everybody went to Jeff Gordon. He was the guy. He dealt with all the salaries. He dealt with all the player stuff. Sather was more just kind of the, the face-to-face guy. But Gordon did everything. Everything. So Dolan's kind of this attitude is coming back to bite him in a butt a little bit because they Monahan would be perfect for that. Perfect fit. But he's not going to go to the Rangers unless the Rangers overpay. That's the thing. If I'm Gordon, I'm like, eh, give me two first rounders. You know, he's going to ask for more from the Rangers than any other team because he hates them. Rightfully so. So, yes, to answer your question, yes. There, there is grudges, and people don't like dealing with certain people, and it does come back to bite you. That's why you have to be nice to everybody. Be cordial. I'm dealing with um, a house build right now, and I'm dealing with an architect, and I'm trying to get some plans from him. And he's like, I don't like giving my plans. I don't like giving my plans. And I'm like, I paid for the damn plans, buddy. Give me the plans. He's like, I just don't feel comfortable in that. I'm like, I don't care if you don't feel comfortable. Give me the plans. Guess what? I will never work with this guy again ever because he's just being a stick in the mud and i do plenty of stuff this is what i do now engineering we get architects for a lot of different things i will never recommend this guy because he's being a pain in my side over something so trivial so you have to just be cordial even if you don't want to it's just the name of the game now they're not going to get monahan and they're going to lose a stanley cup because of it that's it so, okay what's your level of concern for the rangers we talk about just durkin struggles the, the holes in the roster, the, the month they just had, they're still first in the division. They still have a, an elite offense. They still have a goalie tandem that should be among the best in the league. Are you worried about them, or do you feel like they'll figure it out? I'm worried. I definitely am. I think um, the Heedle injury is bigger than maybe people think it is. I think it's a massive blow. I think Blake Wheeler has been a not a huge failure, 
but not a success. They wanted him to fill in on the top six, and he's there now just out of necessity. He doesn't fit. He doesn't look good alongside Zabinajad or Kreider. He's kind of like a, a perimeter player at this point in his career. He gets in a scrum sometimes, but I don't think that line works. Kreider, Zabinajad, Wheeler. The Trocek line is lights out. Absolutely lights out. Panarin, Trocek, Lafreyye. It's a good line. But other than that, it's a very it's a very weak team. So I, I think they need to make something happen with this roster because I this will be a first round exit right now with this team as it's constructed. Things change. You know, we got 35, 36 games left. Things change, but I would be panicking right now if I'm Chris Drury. Like this was a team that was built for the Stanley Cup a month ago. And now who knows what's gonna happen. So yeah, I, I my level of concern right now is an eight. They have to make some changes. Yeah, and this is coming from you who was pretty high on the Rangers entering the season. You know, I was critical of them. I said they might be a team that that misses the playoffs, and that might have been a little bit bold, but I, I just don't believe in this group. And yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it feels like it's the same story with them, except this year, it, it is the same story the last three years, except this year you're not getting elite goaltending, and it's kind of exposing the team a little bit. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Shesterkin will be better. He has to be better. He'll be this. fine. Shesterkin will come back around. He's a good goaltender, but... Yeah, the the depth is an issue, and I, like Fox has been in and out, Lindgren's been hurt. It's just there's they're having issues, and to put the cherry on top, Trochik wants to come on the show, but the the higher ups won't let him. We don't do podcasts here in New York. Everybody is. Vincent Trochik wants to come on our show, All Star, and they won't let him. You believe that? We'll get him in the off season. We'll scorch earth on these guys, just bury him to the ground. <laughs> and they want me to play in their alumni game coming up, New York Rangers. You believe that? And against the Detroit Red Wings. Calling me up saying, hey, come down and play. Not doing it anymore. Crazy. Not a chance. I could play on so many alumni teams. Yeah. It's great. Give them a trade. They call me up. I'm like, ah, it's so many ones for you alumni team. Right? I don't mm-hmm. need any more. All right, let's do some quick hits brought to you by DoorDash for a limited time only, everybody. Limited time. Until 2052. Our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. All you have to do is download the DoorDash app and enter enter code NATION25. Only if you're in Canada. The Great White North. Oh, Canada. My Canada. DoorDash. Promo code NATION25 for a limited time only. Why do you think they say limited time? To put you in a panic? You got to do it now or else the deal's going to end. It adds think, some urgency. Yeah. It adds some urgency to it. I just don't, it's not limited time. Take your time. If you want to do it today, good. If you want to do it next week, that's fine. Use promo code NATION25. Sure do or don't. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. <laughs> if yeah. you're going to use so it, you're going to save some, save some money. Just one uh, major quick hit today. Zach Parise signed over the weekend. One year contract worth uh, eight hundred twenty-five, I think, for um, Colorado. And this is where it's kind of cool. Adrian Dater, who's one of the the main beat guys in Colorado, said the Avs players are very excited. They're quote unquote thrilled by this signing, not only because of what he brings to the to the roster and the experience and all that, but they want to win win him a cup, just like Ray Bork in two thousand one. He's a guy who's been around forever, never won a cup. Obviously, not on Ray Bork's level in any sense. But I think he, I think it's a cool story. And I think I'm glad that the um, Avalanche players are kind of rallying behind this. I think it's a cool thing. Yeah, it's going to, he's not going to do a thing. You think he's going to make that much of a difference, Tim? No, but he's a depth player. And I feel like this is the team that has struggled with a lot of injuries in the past. So I feel like he's not going to make him worse. You know, he can, I think it helps the team. I think it does, especially the depth has been something we've criticized them for all season long. Like Miles Wood and Lekanen and Johansson and Cogliano, those guys weren't getting it done. As um, who called them out? Was it Rantanen or last early in this before the holidays? So yeah, I feel like this this will help him make a little bit better. Yeah, you see, he'll third line center. I don't mind it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think he'll he'll slot in. He'll be fine. He'll put up what? It's thirty games left. He'll get like ten points. I don't know. It's just uh, Colorado's not going anywhere. I'm sorry, Tim. That ship is sailed. It's done. No, stop. Nathan McKinnon is the best player in the world right now. Yeah. He'll be fine. Yeah. They need to get... Why is nobody signing Phil Kessel? That's a good question. Why Why is Parise getting signed before Phil Kessel? 
we are there's not even rumors about Kessler being looked at. That doesn't that's surprising to me. They're different players. Parisi is a you know two hundred foot guy. He wins face offs. He's responsive defensively, and Kessel is a goal scorer. You know he he's not. Parisi is a <laughs> winger. Just want to. Point that out. Is he a winger? He's a left winger. Seems like a sim, but he's responsible. Yes. He's responsible. He could take face He is ups. responsible. He's 39, though. A little long in the tooth. It would be nice to see him get a Stanley Cup. I know Zach. Nice guy. I don't want to dump on him. He's a good player. Had a heck of a career. It would be nice to see him go out with the cup. Good for him. Is he a Hall of Famer? Not a chance. Why am I even asking? There's no way. All right. Anything else, Tim? No. 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 Anything else going on with you this week? Just doing the show. I'm very excited. We're going to interview somebody tomorrow. It's going to be great. Detroit Red Wing. So, potentially. Hopefully. Allegedly. Yeah. Supposedly. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. We appreciate the support. We'll check you guys on Wednesday. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Dropping the Gloves with John Scott, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode. 